It's Sunday morning, the 27th of March, 1977. This is the day 583 people lost their lives. The day multiple crucial events led up to the deadliest aviation disaster in history. But what exactly happened during the Tenerife plane crash? Our story begins at Los Rodeos Airport, now known as Tenerife North Airport. Two Boeing 747s, KLM Flight 4805 and Pan Am Flight 1736, found themselves diverted to Tenerife due to a bomb threat at their intended destination, originally being Gran Canaria Airport. As the authorities worked diligently to resolve the security issue, the two jumbo jets were parked on the taxiway, awaiting further instructions. Inside the air traffic control tower, controllers were faced with a challenging situation. With limited space on the taxiway, they had to coordinate the movements of multiple aircraft in close proximity. Meanwhile, on board both aircrafts, the flight crews were anxiously waiting for news about the bomb threat. The captains and their teams were experienced professionals, well-versed in handling critical situations. However, a series of unfortunate events and miscommunications would lead to a catastrophic outcome. The events that caused the deadly Tenerife plane crash. The miscommunication during the Tenerife plane crash was primarily caused by a series of factors that compounded the confusion in the critical moments leading up to the collision. These factors include a language barrier, time pressure, and limited visibility. The language barrier. The language barrier played a significant role as the air traffic controllers and flight crews involved in the incident communicated in English, which was not the native language for some of them. Despite English being the standard language for international aviation, variations in accents, vocabulary, and language proficiency added to the potential for misunderstanding. For example, the word takeoff, used by the KLM crew, was interpreted by the Pan Am crew as an instruction to begin taxiing, leading to confusion and conflicting actions. Time pressure. The KLM flight crew felt a sense of time pressure due to concerns about exceeding their maximum duty time, which being 14 hours without in-flight rests. This urgency may have contributed to an incomplete readback of the air traffic control clearance resulting in a lack of confirmation and verification of the instructions given. Thick fog. The dense fog enveloping the airport reduced visibility on the ground, making it challenging for the flight crews and air traffic controllers to visually confirm the positions and movements of the aircraft. This increased their reliance on radio communication, further exacerbating the risk of miscommunication. Inside the cockpit of KLM Flight 4805, Captain Jacob Veldhuizen van Zanten, one of KLM's most experienced pilots, was eager to depart. With the bomb threat resolved and visibility improving slightly, he received permission from air traffic control to prepare for takeoff, or so he thought. The KLM aircraft began its takeoff roll without proper clearance. Meanwhile, in the cockpit of Pan Am Flight 1736, Captain Victor Grubbs and his crew were instructed to wait on the taxiway until further notice, as they watched the KLM aircraft positioning itself for takeoff. Captain Grubbs, realizing the imminent danger, desperately tried to alert the KLM aircraft, but tragically, it was too late. The KLM aircraft, still accelerating down the runway, collided with the Pan Am plane, causing a massive explosion and fireball that engulfed both aircrafts. The impact instantly claimed the lives of all 248 passengers and crew on board the KLM flight, as well as 335 passengers and crew on the Pan Am flight. Among the passengers and crew on both planes, only 61 individuals survived the crash. All the survivors were from the Pan Am flight. The survivors faced harrowing experiences, including injuries, burns, and the trauma of witnessing the catastrophic event. There were initially 70 survivors, but nine passengers later died of their injuries. Most of the survivors on the Pan Am walked out onto the intact left wing, the side away from the collision, through holes in the fuselage structure. In the aftermath of the disaster, the emergency response teams and medical personnel on the scene worked diligently to provide immediate medical attention and transport the survivors to hospitals for further treatment. The survivors received care and support from medical professionals and were also provided with assistance from their respective airlines and local authorities. The Tenerife plane crash 
was a devastating event that shook the aviation industry to its core. It led to significant changes in aviation regulations and protocols, particularly in regards to communication, crew resource management, and runway safety. As a result of the Tenerife tragedy, airports worldwide implemented changes to enhance safety. Runway signage, improved radio communications, standardized phraseology, and crew training were all upgraded to prevent similar accidents from occurring in the future. Today, we continue to learn from this tragedy and strive to make aviation even safer. As we reflect on the Tenerife plane crash, we remember the lives lost and the profound impact it had on aviation safety. It stands as a somber reminder of the need for constant vigilance and improvement in the quest for safer skies. If you found this video informative, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more captivating stories from aviation history. Don't forget to check out our other captivating stories and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Thank you for watching, and until next time, fly safe.